I think when I'm asked the question, uh, talk about the mod modern buildings, post-war international style uh, in, in New York high rises, you think, quickly think of Lever House or you think of the Seagram building. And for me, and I'm not sure um, for, for you, but I, but I rarely think of the Secretariat uh, building as being one of the first examples of international style modernism in the US uh, and, uh, and certainly in New York. And likewise, you don't really think of the UN complex as a New York building uh, or as, as New York architecture. It sort of stands outside of um, the, the characteristics of, of New York style buildings. Um, and so it's that, um, that exceptionalism that it has as a spectacular modernist paradigm uh, of objects in a neutral matrix of space occupying a superb site on the East River that make it so extraordinary within, uh, in, within the, the New York context uh, and should make it um, and do make it a treasure uh, for us all, but one that I think that we don't necessarily embrace. It's like the land of the UN itself is not part of the United States. Somehow the UN complex doesn't seem to belong uh, to New York. And so I think that might be one of the ideas that we doing that might, uh, might explore um, a little bit tonight. But the, but the, the UN Secretariat in particular um, is an extraordinary example of modernist architecture. It's a, a vision, it's a, it's a, a sort of a, a prophecy of the direction that modernism as a curtain wall slab uh, shape would be in the architecture of the later, uh, in the later post-war period. So it's certainly uh, worth our attention uh, to, to think about its role uh, in, in New York architecture and in modern, in modern architecture. So um, it is particularly appropriate that tonight we meet here in, another, in this other uh, great example of post-war modernism or, or high-style modernism on the Ford Foundation. And uh, I think that uh, it's, it's especially wonderful that we're all in these, these soft seats in this grand auditorium uh, and that we were able to uh, enjoy the atrium space and this is the superb um, public character of the space of the uh, the garden uh, in the machine of this uh, superb building I'm, I'm going to introduce uh, Pablo Farias who is uh, one is a, a, a lucky resident in, in a way of, of the Ford Foundation uh, Pablo's uh, um, title is the vice president for economic opportunity and assets program for the Ford Foundation uh, and uh, he has uh, been a friend and a, a colleague um, now of, of, of my husband, uh, Mark Wells, who was at, here at the Ford Foundation, um, fortunately for him, for, for a year just, uh, just concluding, and, uh, and has, um, has represented some of these uh, wonderful programs um, that, that Ford um, undertakes uh, around the world. And after Paolo welcomes us, then I'll introduce Michael uh, Adlerstein, um, and Michael will introduce the rest of his team. Thanks, Carol, and I'm uh, just delighted to welcome you to this uh, beautiful building in Midtown uh, Manhattan and to have the opportunity to partner with the Skyscraper Museum in this uh, forum of the United Nations uh, Master Capital Plan. Uh, we are located here uh, in uh, many uh, ways because of the United Nations. The Ford Foundation moved its headquarters from Michigan to New York in the early 1960s. Uh, looking for a home that would uh, support its mission as a global institution, that would support the expansion of its philanthropic act, uh, efforts from the United uh, States uh, to the broader challenges of international development. Of course, the foundation from the early, the early 50s had uh, an office established in, in India, uh, but not a base that would connect it to the broader international development challenges. So coming to New York, uh, this uh, uh, location next to the United Nations uh, became a, a core of the process of building a global presence, an institution that would participate uh, globally in development efforts. And, uh, uh, as a neighbor of Midtown Manhattan, we're uh, very happy to see this process of the United Nations uh, taking place with uh, some trepidation as we think of our own uh, maintenance challenges for a historic uh, building such as this. Uh, but it's an inspiration in that sense to see this process taking shape. 
The Ford Foundation does not uh, in itself uh, focus on uh, issues of architecture or, or urban design, though part of our uh, early work internationally was uh, supporting the development of the master plans for New Delhi and Calcutta and Ahmedabad in, uh, in our work in India. We have in the United States particularly focused on the challenges of uh, uh, poverty concentration and uh, in that sense share a concern about uh, the role of preservation and uh, sustainable uh, design in contributing to the challenges of creating uh, prosperous metropolitan regions. Uh, our work now focuses on the uh, issues of transportation, housing design and housing affordability and job creation allocation as key drivers uh, in metropolitan regions uh, of opportunity. Uh, and uh, in that sense, uh, uh, we see, of course, the great value of our iconic buildings and uh, the significance of uh, what they represent for society uh, mean for these processes of maintaining the vitality and uh, uh, the opportunity generation that metropolitan uh, regions uh, uh, are uh, so much responsible uh, these days. So as a neighbor in this Midtown district, uh, sharing in the architectural heritage and history of the United Nations in New York, uh, we're uh, delighted to welcome you to this forum tonight and to let this uh, uh, program uh, uh, develop the text. Um, who has an extraordinary portfolio of preservation projects. Michael has been serving since 2007 as the executive director of the Capital Master Plan um, at the Assistant Secretary General level to the UN Capital Master Plan. Uh, previously, he was the vice president and the architect of the New York Bot Botanical Garden, uh, as well as the project director for the restoration of Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty. Uh, and for which, for that project, he led the master planning team and managed the planning, design, and all the complexities of construction on Ellis Island. We know about how um, challenging and successful the, 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 that whole project was. Um, Michael is a native New Yorker. He received his architectural degree from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and was a Lowe Fellow at Harvard University's Graduate School of Design. He served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Columbia, and he worked as a, in the State Department as a consultant on preservation issues uh, in, in numerous different projects, including, this is the one that captures um, my uh, attention, the preservation of the Taj Mahal. He's been recognized for his contributions in the field of architecture and historical preservation with numerous awards, and he's a fellow of the AIA. So, and Michael will introduce the, the rest of his team after he talks himself. Thanks. 